Hey guys, my name is Shy, and for this pick a card reading, I'm tuning into Neptune, uh, the planet Neptune, for the kind of guiding energy. And if you are wondering what the hell's going on with like this, um, I am just as curious as you. I, I don't really know what this is about, but I sat down and was literally shown to grab these two pieces of cloth. Uh, to be honest, this blue one is a beach cover up, <laughs> and this green one is just a big, long, green, flowing piece of fabric. Um, I was shown literally to like lay it out like this. I could see it really clearly. The only thing I can think of is that I have recently used both of these pieces of cloth in like, I don't even know what to call it. I guess I could call it in doing like private, my private rituals, right? So I think they're kind of charged up with specific types of, types of energy. Um, that must be relevant here. So <laughs> I'm just rolling with it. Um, no particular theme for this reading, just whatever Neptune wants to bring through. So go ahead and pick your card. One, two, three, and number four. Okay, card number one. I just drew oracle cards to begin with. I'm gonna shuffle some tarot cards. I just wanted to get um, like a really specific message for you guys to begin with. Feel and release. Release all you've accumulated on this journey. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'm sure we've all been hearing this message like constantly, incessantly, loud and clear all the time lately. Um, if you're watching this when I posted it, you know, we just had that Capricorn full moon, which had a really massive theme of <laughs> releasing everything, of letting go, of letting go, like let go, let go more than before, more than you ever have done before. And actually, since that full moon, I've had a huge theme of let go, like I've been finding myself letting go in ways that I never let go before. Like I'm finding weird, random little minutia ways of letting go and I keep in my head just hearing let go, let go, let go. Like really, um... <laughs> okay. First card that flipped up here, Five of Pentacles. So you guys are have on some level, you're worrying about scarcity, right? Scarcity mentality, lack, worrying about money, worrying about not having um, enough love, worrying about not having security in your life, right? For some of you, this might be feeling like you literally don't have security, like being entirely um, insecure on, on any kind of level. But with this Five of Pentacles, there's always something going on on some level, worrying about money. So feel and release that. Feel and release. I don't know if... If, if any of you are into like cryptocurrency, <laughs> um, especially if you're watching this when I post it, uh, you know, there was recently just a huge crash in the crypto market. Um, this might just be for like one person tuning into this, but if, if you're worried about like, maybe you invested in crypto right when the market was up and then it crashed, it like, don't worry about it. This is just a dip. This is just like, you know, economic systems, right? Our frequency just like anything else and they go up and down, up and down. There's whatever goes down is just going to come back, back up again, right? It's going to be fine. And this lesson is like, don't <laughs> feel it, right? Feel if you're having a lesson about having recently lost something. So, I mean, sure, this maybe somebody specifically is worrying about cryptocurrency, but for some people, you know, whatever you've recently lost, right? Or whatever you're worrying about losing, know that this is just a lesson, a frequency that you're going through. And it's helping you actually face your fear of loss and face your fear of lack. And if you can just really kind of look at that and get used to it and be like, okay, like, <laughs> even if this is rock bottom, right? And it's probably not rock bottom, right? It, it, even when you think you're hitting rock bottom, there's going to always typically go a little farther down. <laughs> even if you, but even if you feel like you're hitting rock bottom, it, it's okay because now there's like a clarity that comes from that, a kind of clearing of everything, right? Once you've lost everything, then there's nowhere to go but up. So it's like feel your emotions about your your feelings of scarcity of your lack mentality, feel them and then release them. Feel and release, feel and release. This is just, uh, this is whatever you've lost. It's, it's actually a lesson to serve you and it's going to come back around, right? Whatever you've lost is going to return to you in a new form. It's going to come back to you in some way or the other. Yeah. And nine of wands. <sighs> this is an uncomfortable energy. Um, but this is, especially this particular version of the nine of wands is, is positive. It's uncomfortable because you've been sitting, uh, sitting in some kind of uncomfortable situation for a long time. The nine of wands is always, it could be a really long struggle. It could be feeling like 
should I give up? Should I throw in the towel and give up? Should I give up? If you're feeling like giving up, like don't, you're so close. Don't give up yet. You are so close. And there's actually a lesson here about the magic, the magic of keeping hope alive, even when there is no reason to hope. And this is why you need to be fe feeling and releasing and dropping entirely out of your rational mind because, you know, imagine you're hanging off a cliff with, <laughs> you know, with one finger and you're about to slide, right? It's like, even if you're, or even if you're falling, even as you're falling off the cliff, don't give up hope. Like either a, a miracle literally could happen. <laughs> you never know, or like, so, like something, something could happen to save you. Never, ever, ever give up hope. Even when there is no rational reason to hope, even when you feel like all is lost, don't give up hope. Not yet. Be and this is, again, it's like, why do we put ourselves through these kind of situations, right? Well, there, there is an actual magic to it. If you can, if you can, find it within you because it is within you deep within you deep within you it's just been like obfuscated and lost through everything that you suffered through if you can find it dig it up dig it up from deep within you and if you can maintain hope even when there's no reason to hope that is magical and that like aligns you with your hoped for future like that in and of itself is an act of magic right that in and of itself will bring you what you've been hoping for. <laughs> it's like, I hope you guys know what I mean. Cause I was, I'm always a type of person, uh, like until, until the last couple of years, I was incredibly pessimistic. I never, I, I was like the least hopeful person ever. I just, I never believed in anything. I never hoped for anything. I just knew that life was out to disappoint me and then I would give up hope really easily. <laughs> and I had to learn some really difficult lessons about maintaining hope even in the face of complete and utter hopelessness, right? And it's not really something the mind can understand because the mind doesn't understand hope or the magic of hope or the magic that can come through for you when you really can dig deep and find the hope within you in the face of thinking that all is lost. It's that in itself like is a spiritual initiation and is an important lesson. And it is just an energy you need to pass through because there is a whole different kind of life on the other side of this um, initiation of, of hope. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. <laughs> okay, seven of, seven of pentacles. I pulled this card for myself this morning and I had a little bit of a moment with it. So I typically see the seven of pentacles as it's that card of watering your garden, of waiting and waiting and waiting, like waiting for your garden to bloom, right? Waiting to be able to harvest your crops. This particular version of the Seven of Wands, and this is the moon, beautiful, amazing moon child tarot, right? This, if you read, like I read the thing in the book, and this particular <laughs> Seven of Pentacles is about how actually in your period of waiting, you are beginning to receive. This is actually, it's 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 not so much just a card of waiting. This is a card of receiving um, and receiving from within yourself like the seed has been planted inside of yourself and it is growing and you're you are receiving your reward from within from within the reward is coming from within just look at this beautiful person um like standing i don't know if she's kneeling or standing i guess it doesn't matter you know in prayer in meditation just in serenity and light like her you know third eye is lighting up her heart is lighting up all of her is lighting up and she is aligned and everything that she seeks is coming from within and it this is a definitely a card of receiving it's not so much of waiting but the thing is it's knowing that whatever you're looking for you know whatever you're looking for with this five of pentacles whatever if you feel like you're lacking you find it inside of yourself you find it inside of yourself and you receive it from yourself it's something you can give to yourself um if you feel like you don't have any money well, I mean, you will create money for yourself, but before you do that, you will feel, feel into the frequency of abundance within you. It's just a frequency. It's there. It's inside of you. Feel it. And then the money will start to appear, right? If you're looking for love um, from somebody else um, on any kind of level, it doesn't need to be romantic. It can be issues you have with your parents, not feeling like you have a supportive friend circle. Um, and this can go right up to, you know, your trauma from being separated from source, right? What, it, what it, Wherever you're lacking love, it's like give yourself the love. Give yourself the love. The love is within you. And once you feel it inside of yourself, then your environment will begin to reflect it back to you. 
<sighs> yeah, so. Hmm. Just, I feel like you, you guys are like at the bottom of a dip. The bottom of a dip. The bottom of like a frequency dip. But it, you're not going to be... Not going to be staying there forever. How long you stay at the bottom of the dip it depends entirely on how um, effectively you can release your fears, releasing your fears and releasing your, des or your, how am I, what am I trying to say? Okay, so social conditioning tells you that you need to receive something out from outside of yourself. That idea needs to be released. Um, and once you really embody the knowing that you receive from in, from within, you receive it from inside of yourself, that's how you move out of this energy. And that's, you're going up the dip and like, you know, you're at the bottom of the dip now and you're going to come back out. It, like, that's just the way it works. It's, it's just, it's just the way it works. You don't stay at the, the, the bottom of the, of the barrel, you know, or the bottom of the bottle forever. You just stay there for a little bit, but it's up to you on how long you stay there. So, you know, feel, I think self-empowerment, like empowering yourself to change your circumstances, to first change your feelings, to change your frequency, and then start taking steps to change your circumstances. That is the lesson that your higher self is, is bringing you through, right? That is what like this period of your life is all about. And once you come through this like initiation of self-empowerment, then your whole life changes. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get, um, I'm closing my eyes officially, officially closing my eyes to, to shuffle these and get you just like a message to close with. In the name of love. Your sacred calling leaves the impression of your soul on those you come across. It isn't just the what that matters, but also the very important is the spirit in which you do each task. For instance, are you doing what makes you sing? It is a fallacy to think that you have to suffer for your vocation. Your soul longs to express your individual genius and to leave a handprint of divinity on this life. Stretch beyond what you previously thought was possible. Open your heart to the plans the divine has for you, usually revealed to you through your intuition. Follow your extrasensory perception wholeheartedly to the healing places where dreams manifest. <sighs> there you go, guys. Wish wishing you the best of luck on your journeys. Talk to you later. Bye. Hello, card number two. Welcome to your reading. I just got one oracle card here to start and I'm going to be shuffling extra tarot cards. I just wanted to get this message out first. See with your heart. The time is now to hear the messages. Heart-based perception. What up? <laughs> Dropping out of the mental buzz entirely. This is an initiation of following the signs and synchronicities on a whole new level, a whole new level. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> high priestess, right? This is like your intuition is where it's at. Your intuition, your clair claircognizance, your clairvoyance, your clear audience, your whatever it is, right? All of your subtle senses coming online and everything happening in your life right now is conspiring to get you to take your intuition far more seriously because you are receiving way more messages than you know, right? Then you have given yourself credit for. You are the high priestess archetype. This isn't, to me, this doesn't just represent like intuition and, you know, the goddess and all that stuff. It's that, yes. But this is also that like you are your own high priestess. You are embodying high priestess energy. This is a massive initiation. When the high priestess comes up, more so than any other card, it's like a big fucking deal. It, <laughs> um, It's like, you know, you're synchronizing with past lives when you were a priestess. You're getting in touch with goddess energy and like healing what that means to you because we all like everybody has this damaged relationship with 
the goddess and I use the term the goddess really loosely you can interpret that however you want um because it doesn't doesn't matter right it doesn't it doesn't matter what words we're using or how we're conceptualizing it we're all just trying to get at the same thing so you know whatever the goddess means to you um like I was I've always been a woman who's been really like you know like masculine I always like really was much more comfortable around guys all my friends were guys like I, I don't know how to associate with groups of women although that's something I've been getting uh, better at <laughs> over the last year it's like and I, I always really used to cringe when I hear people talking about like the goddess or different types of like you know moon spirit moon based spirituality I used to think all of it was just totally cringy and I didn't like it until recently I have been having like massive goddess rising energy and it's been such a huge such a huge mind-blowing shift and I'm really just beginning to understand like the power of the goddess and the power of channeling that energy and embodying it as your own high priestess and you know you guys are remembering the frequency of what it was like to be a high priestess in other lives or to be an oracle to be a shaman to be a medicine woman um also equivalent things as a man as well but really here this is like feminine energy um, if you have problems with your sacral chakra or anything connected to like your sacral chakra or f feminine reproductive system or um, you know if you're a guy I think only like 8% of my viewers are men but you know <laughs> if you're watching this this is you, you still have an energetic womb and you also had past lives as a woman so you know it, it's healing all of that energy also for some of you this is something to do with your mother um, yeah <laughs> so um, if you have any of those types of problems that I just listed, know that you can find healing for them by seeking a closer relationship with the goddess. And you don't need anybody to help you with that because you have your own very own personal connection. You are your own high priestess. third eye coming on line <laughs> this is the page of swords but here she is like the sword is almost like an antenna right going up catching catching um frequencies from the universe and she's pointing right at her third eye when this card comes up it's like you are having you are picking up frequencies from the universe that you don't that you aren't noticing you aren't noticing because they're coming through in terms of like your thoughts even feelings um it's like you, you you have no idea how much you're picking up on. You have no idea. Like, think about, oh, like, a random example. Okay, like, I, last week I felt like my sister was thinking about getting a cat. And I was like, that's weird, you know, because she, she's doing her PhD and she already has a dog. And, like, I don't really think she needs more to do in her life, right? <laughs> um, but I just kept feeling like, oh, she's thinking about getting a cat. And then she sends me a picture of how she's visiting her, fr like, she was, like, cat-sitting her friend's cat. And I was like, oh my god, like, I, I picked up on that, I picked up on that, I, I misinterpreted it to think that she was thinking about getting a cat for herself, but clearly I understood, like, my sister and cat, right, like, that was, that was real, that really happened, and it, think of all the times you have random thoughts about random people you used to know in high school, or just, ra like, random thoughts about anything, you ha you're having thoughts, and it's like, yes, you know, they might not always be entirely correct, because, you know, maybe your sister isn't getting a cat for herself, but maybe she is cat sitting right so you don't need to worry too much about oh you know you misinterpreted the little detail was slightly off but start to like recognize the connections re recognize all the connections and also practice just this is something I'm doing like because that example really taught me um how I need to stop like attaching narratives to my like psychic perception so much right because I'm trying to focus on the gist of the frequency that I'm picking up you know so for that thing if I'm sitting there going oh you know I wonder if my sister is thinking about getting a cat I should have just focused in on sister and cat and then gone hmm okay that's all I really got right sister and cat it was my my ego my mind my mind that was filling in this whole like oh I wonder if she's like gonna get a cat right it's like no I should have just focused on the connection between sister and cat and that is why it's important to be seeing with your heart see with your heart because your mind will fill in all of this extra extra narrative extra details and I think yeah it's like time to, to drop out of that and just focus really at the heart of the matter the heart of the frequencies you're picking up it can be about anything right this doesn't have it's not just messages that you're receiving about people you know it's about your own inner guidance um, intuitive nudges to get you to do something or to not do something um, 
yeah, not letting your mind, like don't interpret your intuitive hits, even like your clear cognizant hits, right? Don't interpret them with your mind, interpret them with your heart, see them with your heart, see them with your heart. <laughs> Nine of pentacles. I mean, do some of you want to be like a working psychic? Do you, you or you want to be a healer? Like you want to use your spiritual gifts to make money? <laughs> um, I, and I just happened to look at the bottom of the deck when I said that. The tower. Okay, so the tower is what you're moving away from. If you're gonna get the tower card, really good to have it at the bottom of the deck. That suggests to me that for most of you, oh, and it's right next to Divine Wisdom. For most of you, this. Um, your tower moment has like already happened a couple like a few different things could be happening here because this uh came up with this nine of pentacles it's like if if this is an example i'm gonna do that thing that i just said i shouldn't do but it's like i need to give you an example right this this is um the frequency here is of a tower moment that was divinely guided and it is going to be realigning you with a new type of life that is going to bring you freedom, independence, and abundance. That's the basic frequency here. Now, if I'm going to get you know specific about it and give you a specific narrative to give you an example, it's like this is somebody who could have lost their job <laughs> and been really traumatized about it. Maybe you even liked your job, right? Lost your job, but it's like, okay, you know, the job loss was divinely guided. It was like, the universe was like, you shouldn't be working that job. It's keeping you down. It's slowing you down. Even though you think it might be good, nah, right? So tragedy, you know, you lose your job. You know, you're, you're really upset. It's horrible. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to be like, you know, the homeless, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, no, because <laughs> see with your heart, you are the high priestess. Your third eye is coming online to a massive degree. And you're going to be coming out of this dark, spooky land. You're passing through a portal and coming out into this golden field of golden light, of freedom, joy, independence, and personal abundance. Like, this is, you're, you're walking into the golden field, right? You're, you're walking into the golden future. And it's because of the tower moment. So, like, to continue with the job example, if you lost your job, it's like this is because you're supposed to be working, doing your spiritual craft, right? Being a modern day priest or priestess, right? In whatever it is that you do, you know, it doesn't, this doesn't, it doesn't have to be like a overt spiritual gift thing, right? It can be whatever um, thing makes your heart sing. What are you passionate about? What are you passionate about? This is happening because your, your consciousness has leveled up. Your intuition is like, clearer you're receiving you're receiving so much you're receiving so so much you're learning to, and you're learning to filter through and you're learning to really understand what you're being guided to do and the things you're being guided to do might make no fucking sense could make zero sense whatsoever <laughs> like you might be like are, are you serious i must be insane for doing this thing this makes no sense I, like what but it's like no th this is this is how weird things are now right this tower moment is going to come through turn your i think it's already happened for most of you right so for most of you, this is a past tower moment that's happened recently, all guiding you to the golden, the golden meadow of the like the promised land, <laughs> your good future. And the only thing I guess about this being the nine of pentacles, right? It, it is like an independent card, an independent card. So some of you might have really left something behind with the tower, like a relationship, a job, blah blah blah, something. But that's fine. You're being realigned to live your best independent future. And once you're living your best independent future, then you can be begin to attract to you the things that you want, whether that's, you know, your abundance or, you know, a good career or like a good family, a friend's circle or your romance, romantic relationship or whatever, right? But it's going to come from your own independence and from living, from living as the high priestess in every moment of your day, living the high priestess. I think that is it for you guys. Sending you so much love and light. Bye. Hello, card number three. Um, okay, so I just had one Oracle card to get you an initial message. And then as I was shuffling between the um, readings, this Moonchild card popped out and I knew it was for you. 
gonna see what the oracle card says first shine love on fear love will light up the darkness okay now i know why <laughs> Also, when I was shuffling, um, the devil card dropped out and fell on the floor. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if these guys had a, a big fear-facing moment. <laughs> and the, this moon child card, this is a really complex card. I mean, it's not, this is a bonus card for this deck. This is the moon child tarot, actually. <sighs> so, so much, so much. How, how, do, how do I describe? Maybe I can get a blurb from the book because I think the author does a better job of explaining this than I can. Okay, I'm gonna try and put this up here. I don't know if that shows up well, but there is just a blurb I wanna read. Okay, since Mama Luna also illuminates our shadows, she helps us glean meaning and potency from the darker moments in our lives, the mistakes, the heartache, the falling and failure. But instead of these burdens, she sees diamonds of potential forged within the fires of our deepest dimensions, pushing and pulling us to wise up to our layers, provoking us to feel all the feels and express them at times with utter lunacy. But don't fret, there is a method to her madness. Yeah, so <laughs> this is a card of getting in touch with your intuition. Um, really a huge invitation to pay more attention to the lunar cycles. I know most of you probably already do that, um, but this really reminds me of something I just learned over the Capricorn full moon that we just had because uh, my moon is in Capricorn. And so I, I realized that, okay, like this full moon, right? Full moon in Capricorn, my moon's in Capricorn. This is like a, my lunar return. Of course, we all have a lunar return every month, um, but when you know, your lunar return is the full or the new moon, that's very, um, makes it extra potent for you, right? And what, it, like, it just came to me. I, re I realized that I need to start paying attention to my lunar return every month. Like, I need to know, like, I notice the new moons and the full moons, and I, then I kind of just don't really pay much attention to what the moon is doing between those two phases, right? Um, but I, I realized, oh, I want to start paying attention to what phase the moon is, like, all the time, because it changes signs every two or three days, right? And I want to pay attention to when the moon is in Capricorn, because for me, that's my lunar return. So find out what your moon sign is, and then find out, like, what couple of days every month you have your lunar return. When does the moon fall in your own moon sign? Because... I think, even, you know, even if it's just some random, you know, crescent moon in your own moon sign, it like sets an energetic imprint for how the rest of your month is going to go energetically. Like it sets a theme. It sets a theme. Of course, it's really, really powerful if it's um, your lunar return is happening at your new moon or your full moon. But if it's happening at any random time, it's still a moment of setting a massive intention for like what kind of spiritual goals you're going to work on for the rest of the month or you know any type of goal really but um for most of you i think this is going to be pretty you know folk you guys are focusing on your inner work right moon child and shining love on fear love will light up the darkness um ah sorry did a bad job shuffling and two of swords popped out this is a priestess trying to figure out what she should do next. But you already know what you need to do next. You already, you already know. <laughs> you just might not like it. It's going to involve doing something you're afraid of doing. But this is like really confronting your shadow not in a really traumatic way, I don't think, but it, it's like, this is some, I, th I think your, your inner guidance for most of you is calling you towards doing something you're, that you're going to find very uncomfortable, but kind of in a like social anxiety kind of way, or what will people think if I do this kind of way, or, oh, like, you know, what if I do this and I end up blowing a hundred dollars kind of way. So it's not like, like the stakes might seem high, but I think if you really like look at the big picture and really feel into it, you already know what you need to do. And the stakes aren't actually that high, right? Because the universe wouldn't, like your higher self wouldn't make you do something 
that that's just gonna be horrible, right? It's like, this is your moment to trust that if you are being guided to do something, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be, in fact, it's gonna be great. Whatever you're, you're guided to do is gonna be great. And, but don't judge the outcome of your decision by the old linear 3D standards, right? It's like, okay, maybe you're got, you feel guided to do some kind of public speaking event and or like host an event or something and maybe you know not enough people come and it, it you feel like oh maybe this wasn't worth it maybe this was a failure because you know only half the coffee shop was filled up at my event and like uh, nobody like it, you, maybe you feel like it fizzled out but it's like that that is the complete like that has nothing to do with anything that way of judging the outcome of your action has nothing to do with anything you can't look at the 3D world and count the number of heads in the audience or count the number of views on a video or count the number of follows you have on social media. It's like none of that has anything to do with anything. Like that's like, it's completely irrelevant. It's like you just the whole old 3D human standard just has you thinking that way, has us all thinking that way. We all need to drop out of that because the real outcome of your actions is energetic and cosmic and inner and spiritual, right? <laughs> you, you have no, and like your human mind will never really understand the, the implications of all the things you do, you know, maybe that thing that you did on a human level might seem that it wasn't worth it, but you have no idea how much that might have impacted one person. It might have impacted them so deeply. I'm getting really crazy shivers when I'm saying this, by the way, that's big confirmation. Maybe you, you maybe you wanted to reach a thousand people, but maybe you only reach one person, but maybe you affect them so deeply that it transforms their entire life. And then they go off and they like, you know, transform other people, right? Could be like that. Or maybe there was something you needed to do just to face a fear, just to get over it. And in doing so you heal like past life karma and ancestral karma and you clear out your own bullshit. And then you come out of that like so healed, you know, maybe the thing you did to do, maybe it's a healing thing, or maybe it's like, it was just a lesson you had to learn and now you're leveled up and now your consciousness is going up. Or maybe it was just something you had to do so that you could like pin yourself into a new timeline, right? So really entirely dropping out of the 3D ways of judging your outcomes. Just follow, follow, follow the moon, right? Follow your inner moon child, follow your intuition on this because this priestess, you think she's sitting there like making lists of pros and cons? You think she's like going, should I do this or should I not? Like, should, you think she's like asking all of her friends what, what like all of her friends think she should do? No, she is gonna feel guided to go one way or the other way and then she will not doubt because she will know she knows what her inner guidance feels like and then she will just follow it simply that's it so that is what you guys are going to be <laughs> um practicing and wherever you go you don't need to worry if you feel like you're being guided to con like not really confront but to like go into a place that might seem dark literally or figuratively, right? You don't need to worry because you bring the light with you and where there is light, there is automatically no darkness. You don't need to fight the darkness, you just need to exist and be the light. Love will light up the darkness. And you will be rewarded. Your ships will come in. <laughs> Three of Wands, looking to the horizon, look at this moon is rising. The, the Three of Wands, there was a return of energy, like something you put out there will will be returned to you. You will, you will receive at least an energetic return on your investment, possibly for some of you, an actual physical, tangible return on the investment. But you don't know when it's coming in, right? You sent your ships out and this is back before there was any, you know, satellites. So you had no idea when the ship was gonna come back in with your riches, right? But you know it's coming back, you know it's coming back. And don't be sitting there going, oh, you know, did did my, did it get shipwrecked, right? Because this is an energetic return. The, the universe isn't gonna like lose your energy, right? If you put energy out there, it will go out there and do its circuit and do its thing and eventually it always comes back to you. It, it, that's how it works. This is a reciprocal symbiotic universe where everything, what goes out must come back to you, right? What, what you lose must be returned to you. What you put out there will be returned to you. There's no shipwrecks in terms of the universe's flow of energy. So it will come back to you and it'll come back to you exactly when it comes back to you. There's no like way to time that. <sighs> um, Okay, I want a starseed oracle for you guys.
Yeah. <laughs> Wait, it's not time yet. Things are being woven. That's exactly <laughs> this. Um, you know, the energy is out there. It's going to be coming back to you, but it's just not quite time quite yet. If you're wondering like why it's well, things are being woven. This is happening in the cosmic plan, but look at this, this person sitting on top of this galaxy. That is the energetic pool at your disposal. Also with this, I think if you, if you like really, really can't figure out which way you're supposed to go, if you're feeling like you're this priestess and you can't figure out if it's left or right, then just wait. You don't need to make the decision right now. You might feel like you need to make the decision right now. Maybe you even have people in your life pressuring you to make the decision right now, but you can just wait, wait for the energy around you to shift and show you like which way the current is flowing, which way the current is flowing. Moon child, because this is like following the phases of the moon, following the phases of the moon, maybe your, your like decision or your course of action is going to synchronize with moon phases. And especially because as we become less linear, <laughs> we will find our lives it's like what, what like what are the days of the week anymore right like I, I i can i can't even keep track of what day it is or even what month it is sometimes anymore and i i'm way more interested in like what the planets are doing what the moon is doing and, and you know <laughs> all of that 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 that's how things are timed that's how things are timed in like a non-linear way everything is just clicking into place, falling into place, seemingly randomly to us, but there is a, from a higher perspective, there is a reason to it all. It's just that we can't see it. So if you have pressure on yourself to, you know, work Monday to Friday, nine to five, it's like you're, you're dropping out of that. You're dropping out of that. If you have pressure, you know, to, you know, you work Monday to Friday and then you have your days off on the weekend. Well, it's like maybe, maybe not, right? Maybe you maybe you have to work around the phases of the moon. For this card to come up, I think you guys are more impacted by the cycles of the moon than you realize and potentially like the other planets. I know not everybody feels the planetary transits the same way. Some people just don't feel it at all. And they're like, why does anybody care about astrology? This None of this makes any sense. I can't feel it. That's perfect. They're tuned into other things. <laughs> Most of you, all of you, I would assume, uh, even if you don't know it, you're feeling that like planetary transits and it's having a huge effect on your like emotional ups and downs, your energetic ups and downs, and you need to honor that. So if you can fit yourself into like the flow of the, the planets, right? And especially the moon, um, especially the moon is also just an easier place to start if you, you know, because teaching yourself astrology takes months <laughs> and years really, right? But months just to get a start. So you can just start with the moon. What is the moon doing? You know, it's like you maybe don't schedule a really stressful or exhausting event on a new moon <laughs> um, unless it's like the Leo new moon, right? Because like the Leo new moon, you might feel you might feel really um, excited and really full of energy. Like so it's like every new moon is different, right? The, the new moon in Leo is really empowering and energizing, but new moon in like Capricorn, say, could be really dense and exhausting for a lot of people. And unless you're like me and you fucking love Capricorn energy and it makes you like really like energy high everyone it's different for everybody so even looking up other other people's impressions of the like lunar phases they might not resonate with you because different people have different experiences of the energy you know to use the Capricorn new moon as an example like I'm, I have a Capricorn stellium so I love Capricorn energy and during the Capricorn new moon I'm on a complete energy high like I, I'm just gone right I, I'm <laughs> I'm on Saturn during the Capricorn new moon, but uh, other people like people with a lot of Pisces energy in their chart, for example, um, often find the Capricorn new moon to be really dense, really oppressive and really exhausting, you know, so it completely depends. So pay attention, you know, to the lunar cycles and like if something, if whatever's happening with the moon is making you feel tired, making you feel slow, making you feel like you want to just chill out, then honor that and allow yourself to do that. Even if it means completely rejiggering your schedule, because like Monday to Friday doesn't matter. <laughs> what, what the planets are doing matters more to you in terms of your energy and your emotions. It's like, you know, don't drink any alcohol on the Cancer new moon. That's a good way to get a, get a hangover. <laughs> cancer new moon. 
worst day of the year to, dr to have any alcohol because it, I, <laughs> I saw this last year. Every, several people I know were drinking on the Cancer New Moon and they all had hangovers even though they only had like one or two beers. And they're like, this was ridiculous. And I was like, I wish I could tell you that it was the Cancer New Moon. You shouldn't have drank anything, right? So yeah, I think this is, this. I've never talked so much about the moon in one reading before, but I, I think for some of you, it could be really, really transformative, like really transforming the way you live your life. And like, if you've been wondering like, oh, why am I so tired? And then why am I so amped up? And then the, why am I emotional? And then why this, why? Pay attention, pay attention to the moon. What what sign it's in, what phase it's in, everything. Um, I think there's a, an initiation to be had there. Yeah, that'll help you figure out this timing, you know? You can you can just wait. And I mentioned earlier, paying attention to your lunar return. Um, like if something feels off or you can't decide something, wait a whole month, right? Wait a whole lunar cycle because the energy clears up. It's like the energy, I really feel the energy shift in terms of the moon, like every new moon, every full moon. My favorite moon is a half moon. <laughs> Nobody talks about the half moon, but when the moon, for me, when the moon is a half moon, I, I love it because I feel like, okay, there's no new moon or full moon pulling me out of whack. I feel like at a half moon, everything is so balanced. And that's when I feel the most balanced, like the most uh, secure in my body. Just everything is good at a half moon. Um, but yeah, but there's also, so there's like the phases of the moon, right? But then there's also the, your own personal lunar return. What is your moon sign? When is the moon in that sign? And then a month from there, everything changes every that too. So there's, it's really complex, right? There's different things going on and slowly you can like slowly teach yourself, slowly learn about it. Just pay attention. You, you don't have to understand all of it. You don't need to know everything about astrology or everything, right? Just pay attention and start opening up and just tuning into the moon, even asking, asking for guidance on how you can use the lunar cycles to improve your life. Interesting. That was kind of a strange message. <laughs> well, I hope that helps you guys. Um, I think that's it for you guys. I'm going to leave it there. So sending you so much love and light. Bye. Hey, card number four. Welcome to your reading. Um, what am I doing? Shuffling this upside down, backwards. Okay. Just one oracle card to start and then I'm going to draw more tarot cards. Trust what you need is there. With love, all can be accomplished. <sighs> Gonna see what your tarot cards have to say before I interpret that, because that could go so many ways. You guys can feel into that. What do you need? What do you feel that, there's something that you think you need and you think you don't have it. What is that? Three of Pentacles. It's like a teamwork card. Community, friendships, and building something. Eight of Wands. Rapid spiritual evolution and change. High Priestess. <sighs> Do you guys feel like your spiritual journey has been stagnating? Or are you worried that you're not connected? Maybe even that you've lost a connection? Like lost your connection to spirit, to the universe, to your guides? like you've lost your connection to your community this three of pentacles to me it feels like this is representing what you've lost or what you think you've lost um having lost i mean it could even just be financial security but you know we have these people down here all with their hands together conducting a ritual right they're With it next to this Eight of Wands, this is a card of initiation. You're walking along this path, going through this portal, being initiated by, this is Horus, Egyptian god Horus, 
his heart is lighting up. The Eight of Wands also always represents rapid, rapid change and leveling up, like fast. This is like the fastest energy in the tarot, even faster, I would argue, than the Knight of Swords, right? This is fast, fast, fast. But so things, um, I feel like you're still kind of here. You're coming up to this portal. Um, so portal moment coming for you guys. <laughs> but but you feel like it's been too long coming or that you don't have what it takes to go through with it or go through the portal and that you feel like you would like to go through the portal or through the shift with friends or family. It's like, it feels, feels like you, you feel you feel like you don't have enough support. You feel like you want more support, more obvious, visible support, feeling like your partner doesn't support you, like your friends don't support you, like maybe the universe isn't supporting you if you're feeling like, why is the universe like, throw me to the wolves, right? Not helping me. <laughs> um, trust what you need is there. Trust what you need is there. You're never alone. You're surrounded by like a cosmic entourage at all times. <laughs> you're inside of your higher self. At, your higher self is inside of you. You're surrounded with all the support all the time. So if you feel like you don't have support, <sighs> okay, <laughs> man, I'm sorry. Did I shuffle that off camera? I don't want you guys to think I was like picking cards, but these just flipped up. Tower and five of swords. And it's funny. One of the other piles also had the high priestess and the tower come up. So maybe some of you are watching both readings. <laughs> um, what was I just saying? You feel like you don't have support. Why don't you have support? <sighs> Feelings of defeat. And of course, tower moment. If you are feeling defeated, feeling like something has been taken from you, feeling like support has been taken from you. It's only to clear that out. The t I mean, no one, like, tower moments suck, right? But they only happen to clear stuff out that you don't need. If you thought you, you could only do things with the support of others, it, this is just to teach you that you don't need that support. You don't need it. Um, calling you to go through a phase of spiritual maturation so that you can live your potential as the high priestess. The high priestess doesn't, <laughs> she is completely sovereign, right? She channels the goddess and is the goddess. And I keep, the phrase I keep hearing is travels the universe, you know, travels the universe. She has whatever she wants to have, she goes wherever she wants to go and she does it all in service to her own sovereignty and also in service to the collective. So in order to step up and be the spiritual leader you were born to be, <laughs> in order to be the high priestess, of course, probably not for most of you, literally being initiated as a high priestess, like literally in, in your human body, but this is your own personal priestess initiation. I really feel that there's a new type of initiation offered to everyone or being, you know, it's kind of like, it's the new thing, the new thing, the new spiritual initiation thing is self-initiation, self-initiation. No more like needing to go through a bunch of training, you know, with a specific sect or group of people and ha then having them test you and then having them initiate you and basically validate you right that's how that's how we've done it in our past lives you know we were part of um different mystery schools different religious cults different spiritual traditions whatever and we would go through their training and then we would go through their initiations and then they would validate us and go okay now you are a priestess now you are a priest and now you are whatever right and we've done that in this life we're going to school right oh someone's validated you here's your degree now you're validated right this is like no more of that you're not going to be getting any more validation from others in that way at this moment i mean it's not that you're going to be starved of validation for the rest of your life you're, you're still there's the universe still likes to validate itself because that feels good and helps people know they're on the right track right but it's like in this moment 
support and validation is being withheld from you withheld from your perception it's all around you you can feel into the bubble of love that is surrounding you all the time you can feel it it's there and if you feel like you're not feeling the love not feeling the support not feeling the validation this is your invitation to reach out and feel for it and it's like your higher self is like holding back the obvious physical human 3d experiences of validation because this is time for you to validate yourself <laughs> time for you to initiate yourself you know you ha you could have some weird you know mystical experience and you go was that crazy was that real oh my god i think i'm this i think i'm that like i think this means this i was this in a past life and i'm supposed to do this now you know your own personal very private initiations at some point you need to own them for your own self like that that's it, it this, this is a new type of initiation like the, the self initiation is itself a higher level of spiritual initiation so you know, no one's going to come up and tell you and validate you and say, okay, you're now a high priestess. You're now a spiritual leader. You uh, like have the credentials to do these things. It's like, no, you have to claim that for yourself. That's it. <laughs> validate yourself. Claim your own power because, because you are the spiritual leader that you will only be able to reach the next level of your consciousness and your and reach your next level of service to the collective by self-initiating to that level. It, it's like it has to be a self-initiation. I, I feel like I could just keep saying that <laughs> over and over and over and over. I, I just, that's how your guides want that to be hammered home. Self-initiation, that's like the, 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 the word of the day. Hyphenated word, two words. You guys know what I mean. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna draw one of these. Got my eyes closed. I'm gonna draw just one. Laugh it out. Okay, I can't remember what the message is in the back of this, but I just wanna say before I turn it around that, yeah, I felt like um, I could feel my tone of voice and my own demeanor while I was like channeling your message that I was getting kind of intense and almost feeling a little bit, I don't wanna say antagonistic because I don't feel antagonistic toward you guys at all, but I felt like I wanted to hammer something home, right? And of course, that's not that's not me. Like that's just coming through through the message, right? But I think you guys are taking things a little too seriously, taking things a little too seriously. And I um, that's also why I was reflecting, um, I was absorbing your seriousness and reflecting it back at you. Um, <laughs> taking things a little too serious, taking your spirituality a little too seriously. Um, knowing that like being the high priestess doesn't need to be what you think it is right you don't need to be like in white robes in the forest you know doing a specific types of ceremony ceremonies right you can be the high priestess like you can be living your full fucking potential as a high priestess while eating cheesies sitting on the couch like watching a football game like it doesn't <laughs> like so um part of that is in your past lives when you have been a priestess there has been like specific rituals you had to perform, specific standards of behavior you had to uphold, all of that. There were all of these things that you had to check the box and be like, that's what makes you a priestess. But it's like, now that all of that has to go out the window, all that has to go out the window. There, there's no more seriousness. And in fact, spirituality from now on, in my opinion, is gonna become much more lighter and playful. And that's how we're gonna weave it into our like constant everyday experience of our lives knowing that like there there is no separation between your life and your spiritual life it's all just your life so literally all of it so really um give yourself permission to like way way relax your own like judgments that you have about your own spiritual practices i, I know at least a few of you are worrying that you don't meditate enough anymore <laughs> don't worry about that you 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 you, you don't need to meditate more than you feel like if you only meditate once a year from now on and that's it perfect right no judgment on how much you meditate or what kind of or how good your meditations are maybe for you your spiritual journey just isn't going to include that much meditating from here for the next while like and that's perfect there, there is no <laughs> there are no rules there are no rules to how you need to be spiritual so yeah okay <laughs> getting to the message Laughter untangles the knot of difficulties before despair can settle in. Even serious situations are under divine management. To laugh is to feel good again by accepting the mysterious way of things. 
ease up in order to gain a fresh perspective. No matter how it looks, know this. Everything is as it should be. Everything is as it should be. The divine has assigned a spiritual guardian to watch over you. Yep. Tower moment. Defeat. Rapid, rapid change. Everything is as it should be. I know depending on what you guys have recently been through, what your t what this tower moment is going to be for you guys, you know, when you're in that moment of, oh my God, this can't be happening. I know exactly how hard it is to remember that everything is as it should be. So, but, but learning that lesson and find learning to find that perspective and being able to, and it's not about shutting your emotions off. It's not about going, oh, I don't need to feel upset about this, hor this stressful situation that just happened. No, you can still feel however much grief or just like emotionality. You can feel whatever emotions you have about it, but you can always know that you can float your awareness um, above it in a, in, in, a, in a bird's eye view perspective. And eventually, right? Eventually, and probably sooner than you think, you will begin to understand what happened why it happened and is if you ask if you ask bring me the understanding i need to make sense of this it will come to you <laughs> and if you have if something uh really really difficult happened and especially if it was something you had to see i mean it doesn't need to be something you saw but especially right if you have an image that is haunting you or if you had an experience that is haunting you, you just can't get over every day 10 times a day, 100 times a day, as, as much as it takes, right? Ask for the horror of that experience to be taken from you. And it will. You'll still have the memory, but it, you will stop compulsively thinking about it. And you will stop being so horrified by it, right? Everything is as it should be. And you will come into that understanding. And that will be part of your self-initiation to become the high priestess. Who is you? So, <laughs> good luck, guys. So much love and light. Bye.